You're listening to an Airwave Media Podcast. So we have to make a commercial to help advertise our podcast. Do you have any ideas? What if we did like a monster truck style commercial? Kind of like, uh... Bro History, the best f***ing podcast there is. Wait, we can't curse on this advertisement. Uh, it's okay, dude. I'll, I'll bleep it out. But yeah, then, then it could go like... Get ready for hours of adrenaline-inducing content. I don't know, man. I don't think this would really help people understand what our show's about. Yeah, you're right. Oh, w- w- what if it said... If you like history and geopolitics and hate being bored, check this show out now. I hate this idea. I think people are going to love it. <laughs> Bro history. History and geopolitics for the common man. Listen and subscribe now. Recorded in Chicago, Illinois, with your hosts, Ken, Matt, Neil, and Jeff, this is Triviality. Hello, and welcome to Triviality, the game where a lack of seriousness meets a little bit of knowledge. My name is Ken. Welcome to the show. We have Jeff and Neil in the studio. Hello. How are you doing? Nice to see you guys. We got a pretty full house today, so we're just going to jump right in, right? Yeah, we are. Matt is not here. Uh, he's trying to uh, craft a new type of water. I don't know what that means, but that's what he's doing. It's a very compl- uh, complicated distillation process, right? Something like that. Yeah, it, was, it sounded very long and drawn out, so we decided to hang up the phone. Well, uh, we have lots of guests, so we're going to get right to it. Uh, first of all, we'd like to introduce uh, a Not a Robot supporter from Concord, New Hampshire, Kelsey Slade. Thank you for being our 500th Patreon supporter. It is an honor. You know, I had been thinking about uh, starting to support you guys for quite a while, but I'm glad I waited until the moment I did so I could be lucky number 500. So you could be enshrined in history, or at least our history. Well, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, my um, so I am an IT manager. I work for a nonprofit organization that does sustainability work um, with corporations and investors. So um, outside of work, I tend to switch between a lot of different hobbies, including most recently bowling. Uh, I've joined a bowling league relatively recently, and I also have a variety of artistic hobbies, drawing, painting, music, um, and like I said, a little bit of video gaming. So hopefully that knowledge comes in handy. Very good. Yeah. And uh, we, we heard there may be a video game theme today, but we'll get to that in a second. Our other competitor today is going to be Ken Ludlow. He's a Dutch enthusiast from Missaga, uh, just outside of Toronto, Canada. Welcome back to the show, Ken. Thanks, Ken. I appreciate it. Yep. Too many Kens. But uh, tell us a little bit about right. yourself. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a project manager based out of uh, Mississauga, Ontario, Canada. So just outside Toronto, like you said. Um, I work for a software company. Uh, so basically, when customers come on board to uh, start using our software, I travel around uh, North America mostly and kind of help them implement it and that sort of thing. I typically live in Mississauga with uh, my wife and daughter here, but uh, could be traveling anywhere. I think the last time I was with you guys, I was in Chattanooga, Tennessee. But okay. That's right. I we were in a hotel. Had, yeah. yeah. We probably I happened to, I happened to be this. home today. We probably made this joke last time, but I'm just picturing George Clooney in that one movie. Up in the air? Up in the air. Yeah. You just I got do, tons I do have of points. A fair number of airline miles and hotel yeah. points. <laughs> well, uh, welcome back to the show. And uh, again, a returning guest, John Liu. He's an Oakland Five supporter from Santa Monica by way of what would you say, Connecticut? Rhode Island. I Rhode Island, Island. That's right. By way of Rhode Island. Uh, welcome back to the show and thank you for hosting today's game. Yeah, thanks for having me. Um, it's been a while since I was last on the show back in the pandemic. Lots happened, but oh, yeah. it's great to be back. And this time it's fun to be in the host seat instead of the contestants. Yeah. Do you feel more pressure or less pressure? Uh, neither. I don't think I was pressured either time. It was just fun nice. to be on the show. There's no All expectations, right. right? We're just here to have Hopefully fun. Hopefully that means we're doing our jobs. <laughs> well, I, I'm feeling a lot of pressure to John, perform well today. John uh, was one of the last people we saw before everything shut down. He was That's at right. our party in I Chicago. Remember. Literally in person, yeah. Yeah. I haven't seen another person live since. <laughs> and he's got the t-shirt. Look at that. Look at that branding right there. T Public. That's right. Well, uh, and uh, yeah, John, uh, just remind the folks uh, about yourself. 
Yeah, uh, so I am a marketing insights analyst for a video game company and, you know, love video games. Uh, that's my biggest hobby. And during the pandemic, trivia became my biggest hobby. Uh, but now I'm kind of like evening out again. I'm reducing my <laughs> trivia and playing more video games. <laughs> All right. Sounds good. And you said this would be a lightly video game theme today, but doesn't necessarily require a ton of video game knowledge. Yeah, that's right. So uh, it's more of a general knowledge quiz. It's actually uh, mostly uh, based in, on inspired by the categories from Learned League. But every question has some kind of video game tie-in. And then uh, a number of questions are directly about video games. But they're, you know, it's, it's not intended to be a quiz just for the video gamers. And in testing, I think the uh, trivia enthusiasts generally did better than the uh, less trivia-infused video game enthusiasts. So we'll see. All right, sounds good, but we are looking forward to playing this game. But first, we need some teams. Uh, Kelsey, you informed us that it was a holiday today. So what was that holiday? Yeah, the holiday is, uh, there are two, actually, National Absinthe Day and National Cheese Doodle Day. All right, so you're going to be playing with Ken, uh, the other Ken, not me in third person. But uh, what was your team name going to be? So we are going to be an Absinthe of Cheese Doodles. All right, sounds good. And since it's a uh, cheese day, we're going to be the Gouda, the Bad, and the Ugbri. Because Neil said you Neil can never have too puns. many puns. And that's going to be me and Jeff. And Neil's going to be scorekeeping. But first, we need the rules. The rules of the game are simple. 20 questions split into two rounds worth 10 points apiece. At halftime, there'll be a special swing round designed by this week's host. After regulation, players will enter the final round with the points that they've accumulated and will have a chance to wager 0 to 30 points on five categorized questions. At the end of the game, someone will be named the cream of the crop. I am the cream! All right, without further ado, I'm ready to get going. Jeff, you ready to get going? Let's do it. All right, John, take it away. All right. So round one, question one, will be in the category of science. So your first question is, Half-Life is a pioneering first-person shooter title. The half-life of a radioactive substance is how long it takes for half of any quantity of it to decay. What Greek letter represents half-life, both in science and the game? We can lock in, Ken. Yeah, yeah, I got it, Jeff. I know, you got it from the game and I got it from science. <laughs> hey, how dare you? It's true, though, right? Mm, not necessarily. Other team, what are you thinking? And feel free to talk out loud. All right, Kelsey, what Greek letters do you know? Well, I, I know a lot that are related to radiation, but I'm not positive on which one is going to be representative of the half-life. You know, I, I know alpha, beta, gamma, rays. Um, mm. I don't know if it would be delta, maybe, like change or... Yeah, typically represents a change of something. Yeah, I, let's go with delta. Okay, perfect. Yeah, we're going to go with lambda. Okay, and the correct answer is, in fact, lambda. Round one, question two is in the category of food and drink. In Chrono Trigger, you travel back in time to 65 million BC and party down with the eyeless tribe of prehistoric humans. During the party, the main item served is poi, P-O-I. In the real world, poi is a purple paste often served at Hawaiian luau's. What is poi made from? All right, I think I have an uh, inroad on this, um, being a huge fan of poi dog pondering. Just kidding. Um, but uh, you guys go ahead and talk it out. Uh, the first two things that came to my mind being purple would be either beets or cabbage, maybe. Yeah, I, I, I'd go with beets. I mean, I, I think of Hawaiian paste and my mind initially went to spam because I know that's a big <laughs> thing over there. But, uh, um, I haven't had spam in a while. I don't know the color. Uh, so maybe I, I doubt that they would say poi is made of spam. Spam seems to be its own special class of Yeah, it's, it's pretty revered over there. They have a, a Hall of Fame over in Hawaii. Um, yeah, beets was the first thing that came beets. to my mind. Yeah, sure. Yeah, clock in with, we can go with that. Clock All right. in with beats. Not sure where this is coming from, but I think it might be taro root. The correct answer is taro root. Yeah, it's of Polynesian origin, and uh, some variants are also made with breadfruit or plantain, but taro is the most common. Well, the plantain one sounds good. I've never seen poi or tried poi. But I'm down. I've seen it, but I don't think I tried it. Um, I did have the opportunity to go to like a Hawaiian luau 
uh, last time I was in nice. Hawaii. So. All right. Round one, question three, in the category of business. The genre of business simulation games, where you construct and manage businesses, is popularly named after early genre-defining titles. The most popular and enduring of these centered around managing a theme park. What is the name of this genre, a synonym for the goal of these types of games? We can lock in, Ken. So I'm not sure exactly what you're looking for here. The first thing that came to my mind was Roller Coaster Tycoon. So do you think it's yeah, the ty yeah. Tycoon? It could be, yeah, it could be Tycoon. For? Okay. So, so the goal is to become a tycoon, I guess. Yeah, um, we agree. We said tycoon. Yep, and that's what I'm looking for. Uh, yeah, it's, they're called tycoon games. You're trying to become a tycoon. Roller coaster tycoon is probably the most famous. Dinosaur tycoon was also a big one back in the early days. I played one that was uh, called airline tycoon, where yeah, you had to like plan routes and stuff. Less popular, the bottled water tycoon. <laughs> buy up, buy up swaths of land and. That's what Matt's Deprive doing. Deprive the locals of their. Yes. Yeah, Matt is doing Bottle Water Tycoon today. I remember in, in school, we used to play that uh, when we had free time, and there's always one kid who's just building the roller coaster to crash. Oh, yeah, so. for sure. Death coasters are the best thing you can do in, in Roller Coaster Tycoon. I like just making sure there's enough bathrooms for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> okay, round one, question four. The category is math. The mathematician Hypatia is one of the best great people to get in Civilization VI giving all of your libraries bonus science. Active during the late 4th and early 5th century, she's the first female mathematician whose life is reasonably well recorded. What city known for its great library was she from? Have a well, guess. Yeah, we're good to luck in. Okay, I don't know the answer, but uh, I was traveling as I usually do last week, and I actually took my daughter's Nintendo Switch with me and played hours and hours of Civilization VI. What? Yeah. <laughs> so, Mr. Oh, I I'm, don't really play too many video games. Well, honestly, that's the only one. And as I was playing it, I'm like, this would be a good source of, of questions for, for a game for you guys. <laughs> However, I did not pay a whole lot of attention to the origin of the Great Library. Um, I'm sure, I, I think I was the Australians and I built it in uh, Canberra somewhere. So I don't think that's correct. <laughs> uh, any ideas, Kelsey? I don't really have a line on this one. <laughs> Trying to think back to like uh, Assassin's Creed that was kind of set in that area. Um, okay, Where... I, but I Assassin's Creed is also a, I... a bevy of of actually decent trivia knowledge. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah I mean, I don't. I don't even know what sort of civilization would be fun, or think it would be Persians or the. Greeks, or Greeks, like maybe. Um, so uh, when I was playing Civilization and I was playing the Australians and we took over Greece, what cities did I conquer? I wonder. Uh, <laughs> Crete, <laughs> maybe something like that. Mykonos. Crete, yeah. Well, I don't have anything better. Okay, Crete. Sure. All right. Uh, I remember that part of history where the Australians took over the Greeks. It was a crazy time. But uh, we're going with Alexandria, yes? Indeed. Yeah, I believe that's in Egypt, um, but that would have been part of the Greek sphere of influence. Yeah, that's right. The Great Library was in Alexandria, Egypt. I only knew that because of Lisa Kudrow in The Good Place playing Hypatia of Alexandria. Mm. Oh, yeah! Mm -hmm. No, <laughs> that, yeah, I totally forgot about that. That's a, that's a fun little role she, uh, she plays. She's wearing a Blake Bortles jersey. <laughs> It's too bad they sucked then. Yeah. <laughs> okay, round one, question five is in current events. While developer NetherRealm Studios has been silent on the topic, which publisher and media mega company announced Mortal Kombat 12 in its 2022 Q4 earnings call on February 23rd? It came up as an example of an anticipated game slated for release in 2023 alongside Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. They'll be looking forward to talking about Hogwarts Legacy sales in their Q1 earnings call. All right. Uh, I think we have a good idea here, so we're going to lock in. So the only line I have on this one is I believe Hogwarts Legacy was uh, Avalanche games. So my, my guess would be Avalanche if they're with the hint about discussing Hogwarts Legacy sales. Yeah. I mean, you mentioned a publisher and a media mega company. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if that would qualify as a mega company. I'm I'm not right. 
really familiar with video game publishers specifically. So maybe in that world, they would be. Um, the thing that came to my mind just with the list of uh, games that, that John mentioned there were, um, you know, with Harry Potter and all the DC stuff and Mortal Kombat was, I think it's Warner Brothers, is it? that? that yeah, the, Warner Brothers right, is definitely yeah. Harry Potter. Um, and then I'm sure they probably have a, a video game publishing arm, maybe like Warner Brothers Entertainment or something is, you know. It, yeah, let's let's go with that. Similar. I think it fits the clue better for sure. Yeah, I agree. Um, all the movie rights to these properties belong to Warner Brothers, so we're going with Warner Brothers. The correct answer is Warner Brothers Discovery. Warner Brothers is totally acceptable. Good job. Well reasoned. Oh, are you guys are mowing us down just like the Australians did? Uh, <laughs> the Greeks. <laughs> Greeks. <laughs> After five, it looks like the scores are fairly close, but an absinthe of cheese doodles is at 20 points, 30 points behind the Gouda, the Bad, and the Ugbri with 50 points. All right, moving into the second half of the first round. Question six is in the category of world history. Crusader Kings is a grand strategy game set in the Middle Ages. Despite the title, many scenarios do not actually involve the Crusades. One such recurring scenario in the series centers around the 1066 battle between William of Normandy and Harold Godwinson. Which nearby town is this famous battle named after? Ken we can lock in. Nice. Yeah. Um, um, uh, Hastings, I believe. Battle of Hastings. That sounds perfect to me. Let's lock in with that. Oh, everyone knew this one except for me. Yeah. Uh, we also said the Battle of Hastings. Good job. Yeah, that's though. right. William of Normandy is William the Conqueror, and he won at the Battle of Hastings. Well done. I'm assuming it's the inspiration for Poirot's best friend, Hastings. <laughs> All right. Uh, Round one, question seven, is in the category of theater. The third mission of Hitman Blood Money sends you to Paris, where one of your targets is the opera singer Alvaro de Alvade, who is rehearsing for a production of Tosca at the Paris Opera House. The opera Tosca debuted in Rome in 1900 and is one of the most popular and most performed operas in history. Who composed Tosca? All right, Jeff has picked an Italian, and uh, that's more than I could do. So we're locked in. Chef Boyardi. Boyardi. <laughs> Kelsey, I'm hoping you can pick an Italian. <laughs> uh, trying to think of Italian. I mean, he opera. might not be Italian. Could not be yeah, Italian, that's, but that's I think it's true. a good. I think it's a good idea to guess an Italian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's for some reason the only thing coming to mind is Tchaikovsky, but I don't think that's. It's not a very uh, Italian sounding. Not name, no. Italian, no. Yeah, no, no. Um. Oh man. I I feel like I'm gonna know it when I hear it, but I don't think mm. it's going to come to me. Uh, let's. Uh, what are we locking with a lucky Giovanni? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's go with it. That's Rubisi? that's pretty Italian. So we got the Johnson, the Johansson, and now the Giovanni. Close with the Gia, Giacomo, Puccini. Uh, yeah, we guessed uh, Puccini. Go. Oh, I, I definitely have, have heard of him before. I have as well. Never would have thought of it, though. I would have never pulled his first name, but... All right, moving into round one, question eight, in the category of games and sports. Which game introduced the character Waluigi to the Mario franchise? Wow. This game had 20 characters, including some that hadn't been seen in years, allowing for matches like Daisy and Birdo versus Donkey Kong and Toad. All right, we're going to lock in with a guess here. All right, so despite my uh, recent foray into Civilization VI again, I haven't played video games in a while, um, so I don't know if this might be too old of a reference, but... Um, the only thing that came to my mind, Kelsey, was uh, Super Smash Brothers, which certainly yeah, did something Super similar to that. Yeah, Super Smash is possible. I, for some reason, can't remember Waluigi being in the current yeah, iterations uh, of that. I know he's in Mario Kart. I know he's in, uh, like, Mario Party. Mm -hmm. Um yeah, the 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 name is is not familiar to me, so I don't know if there's newer versions of this or, or newer versions of anything. But I know Super Smash Brothers kind of pitted characters against each other mm -hmm. uh, in the way that John laid it. So uh, yeah, that'd be the best thing I can think of. I don't know if you have anything else. Yeah, I I'd, I'd go with that. I mean, I can't 
I'm trying to think of anything. They designed the mm -hmm. halftime show for the Super Bowl, right? Super Smash Brothers. <laughs> People will get it. I'm sort of <laughs> leaning <Okay>. towards. <laughs> Sorry. I'm sort of leaning towards Mario Party, but okay, um, sure. I, I would go with. I mean, if you want to go with no, Super no. Smash, we could. No, but let's right. let's do if you think in Mario Party, we'll lock in with that. I'm hoping Ken's gut is right because um, there's actually more animosity in our house when we play this game than Super Smash. Yeah, uh, because he said like one-on-one -on -one matchups uh, made me think of Mario Tennis, and I know that while Luigi uh, started in like one of those side like kind of goofy games, so we're saying Mario Tennis. You picked up the clue exactly. Yeah, the doubles matchup implied Mario Tennis. Well done. Well nice poll. Round one, question nine, is in the category of geography. The original game, Uncharted, was set in South America, but the movie shifted the action to which country in Asia, whose largest city by population is Quezon City? Q-U-E-Z-O-N. Where would they have a film industry that would support a movie like that, though? Uh, it doesn't necessarily have to have been shot there. It just takes place there. Oh, yeah, I don't think it'll help anyone, but it was not shot there, so that makes sense. Yeah, I don't get on planes. <laughs> I don't know how they stay in the air. Does <laughs> he not fly anywhere? No, I'm just oh. say hello to your pilot for me. <laughs> I didn't know if he was like John Madden and he like no. took his bus everywhere. Um, all right, Ken and I discussed a couple possible answers after ruling a bunch out, and um, we're just gonna have to take a guess. We have a reasonable guess. Have your, has your travels ever taken you to Kazon City? Not yet, not yet. Um, we've got to get our salespeople focused a little bit more over in that part of the world, I guess. But uh, I don't have a great guess either, Kelsey, but I do. I mean, I've seen the movie. Um, so obviously the beginning was set mostly in North America. Uh, and then they were in a, a city where they were kind of exploring around underground a little bit. Um, and then the final scene, spoiler for anybody who hasn't seen it, takes place in, seems like an island uh, kind of area, right? So I don't know if, the, you know, one of the places, uh, you know, a country there that, it, you know, there's quite a bit there, mostly islands, Philippines mm -hmm. or... Uh, Sri Lanka like or, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, Malaysia, Sri Lanka, Singapore... Yeah, see, I got to start paying more attention when I'm watching the movies, I guess. Um, <laughs> uh, sorry, Singapore, Malaysia, Sri Lanka. Do you want to say Sri Lanka? Sure. All right. You guys are going with Sri Lanka. Why don't you take this one? Yeah. Um, just kind of ruling stuff out. Um, we we couldn't place it, and so we just guessed a country where we couldn't name many cities. We said Laos. So the correct answer is the Philippines. Mm. Uh, no way, Kazan that's not City... Manila? No, Quezon City is in the Metro Manila area. Oh, no way. But it's actually like a, a subsidiary city that is larger in population than like Manila proper. Oh, wow. Yeah. And I believe the Philippines was said too. I think, Ken, you said it. Yeah, I, yeah I... that was the first thing that came to my mind. I should have stuck with it. Yeah, I, mean, I knew. I, I thought it looked vaguely Spanish. Yeah, same. And I was thinking I, the island of Luzon sounded like that, but I, I thought for sure it was Manila. But that's great fact. I love when I'm wrong and I learn something. I love when Jeff's wrong and I learn something too. I just learn love that's when Jeff's how, wrong. That's a, that's supposed to be how that works, right? But usually I just get it wrong and I'm like, that's ah, a sports thing. I'm not going to remember that. <laughs> All right, last question around one. Yep. Last question around one is a video game before and after. So, what combination of two games might have the following premise? Mario's first visit to Yoshi's Island takes a turn as his quest to rescue the princess brings him to Azeroth, where he ultimately faces the Lich King Arthas at Ice Crown Citadel. All right, we're locked in. All right, cool. Kelsey, there was a, a lot of words in that question. Yes, um, there were. I, I did not understand very many of them. Uh, so, um, yeah. <laughs> uh, so we're looking of... for, yeah. Uh, I have no idea on the second one. Um, I mean, the Mario Mario one. Yosh. All right, first time going to Yoshi's Island. Um, yeah, I mean, the only before and after I can get that could even remotely make sense would be like Super Mario World of Warcraft or something along those lines. 
That um, is already far more than I ever would have gotten. So you can certainly lock in with that. All right, let's go for it. We think that would be a great guess because we said Super Mario World of Warcraft. The correct answer is Super Mario World of Warcraft. Well done. All right. Good job. Good job. I've well, gotten some uh, criticism on this question because technically M Mario visited Yoshi's Island as a baby in the game Yoshi's Island, but the first game that came <laughs> well, out was Super that, Mario. World. That's what threw me. I'm just going to tell you that. Like, I, <laughs> I didn't even consider that because we'll, uh, we'll retract the points. <laughs> After the first round, uh, team an absinthe of cheese doodles picking up 20 more points, bringing their totals to 40. And the Gouda, the Bad, and the Ugri picking up 40 points in the second half, bringing their total to 90 going into the swing round. Before we go to the swing round, just wanted to say a super big thank you to John, Kelsey, and Ken for being Patreon supporters. It helps our show. We've already been uh, in the process of upgrading a ton of our equipment. We got new uh, microphone arms. We're going to get some new tables. We got new chairs. Uh, it's just making recording a lot easier. And we're also going to be experimenting with a little bit of video and our new uh, recording platform will also allow some of our patrons to actually watch in the background. Um, so what's uh, really nice is uh, you can just kind of watch. You don't even have to interact or, uh, or you know, do anything with the game. You can just listen, and we might be able to do that for a few special patrons. But uh, most of all, uh, you get a lot of bonus audio content along with uh, some stickers, boxes, and things like that. Uh, and uh, I guess the, the main selling point, uh, Jeff, is that you get the uh, new main feed episodes ad-free. Yeah, and uh, often you will get them early as well. My favorite selling point is uh, so that there's less noise in the recording. Ken was so kind as to get me a straight jacket, mm -hmm. uh, which I'm wearing currently. So so if you'd like to uh, join in supporting the show with John, Kelsey, and Ken, and uh, just help us buy a new straight jacket for Jeff, uh, you can go do that at <laughs> patreon.com slash trivialitypodcast. And uh, yeah, before we actually get back to John for the swing round, uh, we just had a really quick message for you. We've been saying it for the last few weeks. For the next two months, our new network, Airwave, is going to be conducting a listener survey to help us get to know you, your interests, and what you think of the show. Yeah, please support us by taking that survey at surveymonkey.com slash r slash airwave. It's a very quick survey, and your feedback will help us improve the show and find interesting sponsors to you. As our way of saying thank you, you'll be entered to win a $500 Amazon gift card. Again, that's surveymonkey.com slash r slash airwave, or click the link in our episode notes after you listen to today's show. All right, so for the swing round today, uh, we're going to do same year games and movies. I'll give you a list of 10 video games and a list of 10 movies. Each game is paired with a movie that came out in the same year. So for each pair that you identify correctly, you'll get five points. And then if you can get the year, uh, you'll get one bonus point. Okay, and the games will be read first uh, to associate with the question numbers. So go ahead when you're ready. All right, so first I'll give you the 10 games. GoldenEye, Sonic the Hedgehog, Super Mario Brothers, Space Invaders, Dark Souls, The Oregon Trail, Super Metroid, Guitar Hero, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, and The Sims. Uh, so the 10 movies are Pulp Fiction, Good Will Hunting, Back to the Future, Halloween, A Clockwork Orange, V for Vendetta, Boss Baby, X-Men, Silence of the Lambs, and Moneyball. All right, so we will go ahead and try to match these, come up with the year for extra credit, and we'll be right back. And we are back with the answers to the swing round. Uh, John, can we get the movies one more time, and we'll tell you what game we picked and what year. All right, so the first movie, we were looking for Goldeneye. Uh, for that one, we said Goodwill Hunting and 98. All right, that sounds good, because we had the exact same thing. The answer is Goodwill Hunting in 1997. So five points, both teams. All right. The second game we were looking for was Sonic the Hedgehog. All right. For that one, we said Pulp Fiction and 94. Great year for movies. Uh, yeah, 94 sounds better. But we said uh, Pulp Fiction as well. We guessed 1992. So the movie that came out with Sonic the Hedgehog was Silence of the Lambs Ooh. in 1991. Oh, yeah. What was I thinking? Okay. Uh, third movie, Super Mario Brothers. Sorry, the third game was Super Mario Brothers. 
Uh, yeah, we said uh, Back to the Future for 85. Uh, we had Silence of the Lambs for that one in uh, 1991. That is Back to the Future in 1985. Uh, okay, next move, next game was Space Invaders. We thought that one had to be Clockwork Orange, and we said 76. Uh, yeah, for that one, we also said Clockwork Orange. Uh, for the year, we had 1978. So the movie was Halloween, but the year is 1978. So one point for Absinthe. All right, the next game was Dark Souls. We thought that was going to be Moneyball in 2012. Uh, we said Moneyball as well, uh, but we said 2014. The game, uh, the movie is indeed Moneyball, but they came out in 2011. Okay, uh, next game, The Oregon Trail. Uh, we said Halloween for this one, unfortunately, and uh, we guessed 78. Uh, we also said Halloween. Uh, we said 1981. So the Oregon Trail came out with A Clockwork Orange, and it's a lot earlier than people think. It's 1971. All right. Next game is Super Metroid. All right. For this one, we put Silence of the Lambs for 91. Yeah. Now that we're playing it all out, I, I should have switched these. We had Back to the Future for Super Metroid. Uh, and we said 1980. Oh, well, Back to the Future came out in 1985. We knew that. Something tells me this one's Pulp Fiction. Yep, mm -hmm. this came out with Pulp Fiction in 1994. Yeah, Super Metroid on Super Nintendo. Okay, next game is Guitar Hero. We said uh, V for Vendetta, and we guessed O for... Uh, we also said V for Vendetta. Uh, I think that came out around 2001. It is indeed V for Vendetta, but both of those came out in 2005. All right, next game is The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. We said Boss Baby and uh, 2018. All right. We said Boss Baby as well and 2017. So it is Boss Baby and they came out in 2017. Nice job. Right. And the last game, The Sims. Uh, X-Men and I think that was 2000 even. Yeah, this is exact, exactly the same that we have. Uh, X-Men and that definitely came out in the year 2000. Yep, that's correct. X-Men in 2000. All right. After a very fun swing round, it looks like an absinthe of cheese doodles picking up 28 points, bringing their total to 68. And the Gouda, the Bad, and the Ugbri picking up 32 points, bringing their total to 122. Moving into round two, question one is in the category of lifestyle, which, uh, as you know, in Learned League is kind of a potpourri grab bag. Twitch.tv is the biggest video game live streaming service by far, but was originally a spin-off of another live streaming service founded in 2007. What was this pioneering service named after one of its co-founders? It shares the same uh, CCTLD of .tv with Twitch and competitor Ustream. Since I don't know straight off, this is where we do a shameless plug for following us. We do a monthly live stream over at twitch.tv slash trivialitymat. Uh, for those of you who are interested in playing live trivia along with us. But unfortunately, we don't know the answer. So should we just tap on this one? I, I feel I to. feel far from an answer. So I think that course of action is justified. You got anything on this one, Kelsey? I do not. Nope. Twitch is the only video game streaming platform I am aware of. Uh, as am I. I am not aware how to use it at all and have never been to... A to uh, any of your triviality events. Although I see them posted on the Discord all the time and I'm jealous that I'm unable to figure it out. Um, so yeah, I think we'll, we'll, this one might be a double tap. All right. Yeah, it's definitely a tough one. A little bit of an internet history deep cut. The answer is justin.tv. Okay. Yep. Named after co-founder Justin Cam. Okay. Round two, question two. In American history... Assassin's Creed 3 is set around the time of the American Revolution. Many events and plot points center around which general from Virginia, who in 1754 led the colonial forces in territorial disputes in Ohio that initiated the French and Indian War? All right, Kelsey, being Canadian, I'm going to might have to <laughs> defer to you on the U.S. history questions. Yeah, that's fair. Um, unfortunately, history is not my strongest suit. Um, oh. I, 
A Sherman <laughs> was the first thing that came to mind. Yeah, me too. But I don't know if that was a tree or a tank or what. <laughs> <laughs> It might be Definitely all of those above. <laughs> and also a general. I guess, yeah, I guess they could have named the tree and or the tank after someone specific. So um, if that's what's popping in your head, let's go for it. Let's go for it. I believe the namesake for the Sherman was from the Civil War. Um, we're talking way before that. And I believe the general who would become the uh, leader of the colonial forces in the American Revolution uh, cut his teeth in the French and Indian War. So we said Washington. Correct answer is George Washington. Yeah. Like I, I said, history that. not my strong suit. Completely. I have heard of George course. Washington before, even even up here in Canada. All right. Uh, round two, question three in art. Grand Theft Auto V is set in San Andreas, a fictionalized version of Los Angeles. The game's map is expansive and includes a fairly good reproduction of which art museum named after an oil baron located in the Santa Monica Mountains in West L.A., across the 405 highway from Bel Air. All right. You have some nice How art you uh, behind barons? you. Uh, well, no, I, they're I just puzzles. <laughs> right. I was hoping we could um, get it from the art angle. Um, who are some oil barons? Uh, I don't know. Rockefeller, is he an oil baron? I, yeah, he, he is. Uh, um, I believe he set the standard for oil barons. Oil baronship. <laughs> the, the Rockefeller yeah. Art Museum? Sure. Yeah, we yeah, said the uh, right. we said the Rockefeller as well. Okay. The answer is the Getty Center, named mm. after John Paul Getty. Oh. Uh. Yeah, when he started the museum, he was uh, replaced by Christopher Plummer, if you remember, Ken. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yes, yes, yes. Did he also like to stamp his name on a bunch of images, or...? Yeah, he loves going on that, the internet. That, the, that is also named after him, yeah. <laughs> I was wondering about that after you said that. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, round two, question four in literature. Ready Player One is a book about 80s nostalgia centered around video games. The core plot is driven by the quest to retrieve an Easter egg from which 1980 game for the Atari 2600, which popularized the idea of video game Easter eggs when the programmer hid his name in the game as a secret. It's just this, right? There's no more to it. Uh, I don't know. I think it's just called that, so we're going to lock in. All right. Uh, I have seen the movie Ready Player One. I don't think I read the book. You have one up on me. Uh, so we're looking Early for Atari games. Yeah, from um, 1980. That would have had the first Easter egg. It's because I don't think in the movie they actually referenced the actual game that, like, they may have in the book. So I don't know if my knowledge of the movie is going to help us too too much. I think they probably came up with something different for the movie. I could be wrong about that. Uh, I did play Atari games in the 80s. Let me see. Uh, the only ones that are coming to mind, and I don't think it would be correct. Like I, I know Joust was a game that I've played on Atari. Oh, I love Joust, yeah. Um, Joust Centipede. There's another one I'm thinking of, too, but I, I'm not going to pull the name. i go with Joust. Sure. That's a great game. <laughs> yeah, we love Joust. Um, I think the game is just called Adventure, and it looks paint peelingly boring, but uh, I've never played it, Man. but we said Adventure. The correct answer is Adventure, and uh, I, th I think they did use it in the movie, but I mean, that was, oh, did that was a while. It's been a while since yeah, I've seen it. Yeah, it was it. in there, yeah. but uh, Adventure is also a trivia nugget of having the first Easter egg. It's mm -hmm. good to know. All right, round two, question five <laughs> in the category of film. Which actor and producer who has won a BAFTA award, has two Academy Award nominations, and eight Emmy nominations, starred as the main character in the 2008 video game movie Max Payne. This actor is also well known as a musician, releasing a number one song with his group in 1991. Yep. And he hates getting on planes. Uh, we are locked Share something in common with Jean Valjean. All right, uh, Kelsey, this is the only one that I've feel somewhat confident about it. I think uh, Max Payne was Mark Wahlberg, if I'm not mistaken. He would have certainly had music out at some point mm -hmm. uh, with his yeah, funky, funky bunch. bunch. 
uh, you all right know, yeah work. i i think that fits i'll definitely go with that yes we agree so getting and good we vibrations said, from that answer yeah we said mark Wahlberg. it is mark Wahlberg, and good vibrations was the number one nice job see we're all a funky bunch here today what a way to bring us together all right round two question six in television Players is a show on Paramount Plus from the creators of American Vandal. Players is a sports mockumentary that's focused on the LCS, the actual North American Pro League for which eSport, the most popular competitive online PC game in the world. All right, and uh, we're locked in. Hey, do we want to get a score update really quick, Neil? Yeah, well, the scores are, are still uh, basically the same. It looks like uh, an absence of cheese doodles picking up 10 points in the first uh, five of the second round, bringing their total to 78. And uh, the Gouda, the Bad, and the Ugbri picking up 30 points, bringing their total to 152. Yes, thank you for that. And as I said, we are locked in. So what do you guys have for the LCS? All right. My video game knowledge mostly comes closer to the Atari 2600 and all the all stuff that's <laughs> going on today. Um I, mean, I was thinking is... possibly like League of Legends or something along those lines. Yeah, that uh, sure. Yeah, let's do that. All yeah. right, League of Legends. I thought it might be League of Legends as well, so that's what we answered with. Yeah, LCS is the League Championship Series. It is League of Legends. Nice. Well done. Nice. Round two, question seven in classical music. Eternal Sonata is a Japanese role-playing game centered around which romantic pianist and composer who died of tuberculosis at age 39. In the game, you collect several of this composer's well-known pieces, one of which is optional, his heroic polonaise. Did you say they had a tasty bolognese? <laughs> no, uh, it was the uh, optional piece in the game is his heroic polonaise. Oh, it should be a bolognese, though, N -A. I think. Neil's looking oh. forward to lunch today, apparently. I, yeah. <laughs> we are locked in. So, so it's not Chef Boyardee this time. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I also don't have much knowledge of the different divisions of classical music or um, yeah. like time periods of composers. Yeah, I mean, the sonata just makes me think of Beethoven. It's, but, yeah, um, yeah. I'll, I'll go with Beethoven. We went with Beethoven too. It seems like all the uh, the stuff is lining up for this one from the question. Pianist, composer, early death, tuberculosis. Sounds good. I mean, early death and tuberculosis is like 90%. Yes, of, that's true. <laughs> of deaths before like 1800. But Beethoven. Get out of here, Neil. <laughs> all right. Uh, the answer is Frédéric Chopin. Mm. So uh, Polonaise is French for Polish. And uh, he is the uh, probably best known composer from Poland, at least of that time period. All right. Uh, in a little bit of a context switch, round two, question eight, we're moving to pop music. Which colorful music group has the most subscribers of any musical artist or group on YouTube? This group has collaborated with and appeared in the game Player Unknown's Battlegrounds Mobile and held a virtual concert in the game in 2022. I think we're going to lock in. So, colorful music group. My first thought was Maroon 5. The Blue Man Group. Sure. My, my first thought was Green Day, but I think Maroon 5 fits much, much better. All right. I thought for Let's sure this was it. Black Flag. So, we're going with a younger group that is probably pretty hip with the kids, and uh, I don't listen to them. I think Neil might like them a little I bit. I do, right? yeah. Blackpink? The answer is Blackpink. Yes. K-pop rules the YouTube. You damn kids and your K-pops. <laughs> They're going to take over now that, um, you know, the other famous group is all doing military service, right? Uh, yeah. BTS. Yeah. I heard I heard a lot of waves once the, they were doing their compulsory military service. Mm -hmm. Damn you kids and open up your horizons to international <laughs> music. <laughs> all right. Round two, question nine in language. Which language is the third most commonly spoken language in the United Kingdom after English and Welsh? Video game characters that speak this language include B.J. Blackowitz from Wolfenstein, Lydia Sobieska from Tekken, and Zofia Bosak from Rainbow Six Siege. All right, Jeff with an interesting answer. Um, I like it for the, 
the like name associations for the video game characters. Yep. I'm surprised it's the third most spoken in the UK, but let's go with it. Based on the names, I was thinking, like, mm, well, I don't know, Wolfenstein, German, maybe. Or yeah, the names were kind Russian. of the way I was looking at it too. I mean, the first thing that came to my mind looking at the names was was Polish. Again, I don't know that Polish would necessarily be the third most spoken language, but there could have been a, certainly an influx of, of people from Poland uh, during the Second World War maybe that came through uh, right. something like that. Yeah, yeah um, Polish sounds good to me. Yeah, um, I, I believe there was an influx uh, of, of Polish immigrants to the UK, um, and we guess Polish. The correct answer is Polish. Well done. Mm. Nice. Good job, Ken. And this Ken as well. Hey, I had nothing to do with it. Good job to all the Kens. Way to go, everywhere. Kens. <laughs> yeah. And the last question in the second round is another video game before and after. What combination of two games might have the following premise? You join the Grey Wardens to defend the continent of Thetis from the Blight, but end up leading different historical armies in wars of conquest all over the world. Thetis is T-H-E-D-A-S. All right, it looks like uh, an absinthe of cheese doodles is locked in, so feel free to talk it out, guys, in the studio. All right, so for the first part, we're thinking that's a Elder Scrolls game. We're kind of deciding between Morrowind, I'm Oblivion, and Skyrim. I'm almost positive it's Oblivion because, yeah, there would have been the invasion of the, of the, yeah. Whatever that said. Yeah, the blight or whatever. <laughs> okay, uh, I don't know any game that starts with Oblivion. I don't think so. Historical armies and wars of conquest all over the world. Oblivion incoming. Sure, we don't know. <laughs> what did you guys have? So this was a team effort that may or may not pay off, but um, I, I got maybe Age of Empires for the second part, and uh, Ken came up with Dragon's Dragon Age, so Age. Dragon's Age of Empire. Oh, the oh. correct answer is Dragon Age of Empires. Well done. I, forgot. Yeah, uh, I, I was like, I know it's a game I've played. Yeah. Well done, uh, Absinthe of Cheese Doodles. And with that, they're going to pick up 30 points, bringing their total to 108 going into the final round. And the Gouda, the Bat, and the Ugbri also picking up 30 points, bringing their total to 182. Still anyone's game. The final round categories will be in the five roles of League of Legends. Top, jungle, mid, bot, and support. I know Neil is a top and I'm a mid. <laughs> I like to just be there for support. <laughs> Only when we're in the jungle. All right, it looks like all the wagers are locked in, and both teams have subscribed to the go big or go home mantra, uh, even though one of our teams is going to be going home regardless. But uh, it looks like an absence of cheese doodles going to wager 20 all the way down, and the Gouda, the Bad, and the Ugbri going 30s all the way down. All right. Question one in the category of top. The top-selling game franchise on Nintendo platforms is, of course, Mario, which is number two. We're looking for most copies sold across all titles on all platforms within the series. In the category of jungle, in Street Fighter, Blanca is from the jungle of Brazil. This means his favorite cocktail might be the national drink of Brazil, made with sugar, lime juice, and cachaça, a Brazilian liquor distilled from sugarcane, also known as Brazilian rum. What is Brazil's national cocktail? Question three in the category of mid, China is also known as the Middle Kingdom. Which Chinese company is the largest video game company in the world, owning 100% of Riot Games, 84% of Supercell, and 40% of Epic Games, among many other investments? Outside of gaming, they're best known for QQ and WeChat. Question four in the category of bot. One of the most beloved robots in gaming is Mega Man. But that's not actually his original name. It was changed for the U.S. market. What was his original name that fit a theme with other characters like Beat, Tango, Treble, and Roll? And question five in the category of support. Early adventure games sometimes had completely insane puzzles designed to force you to call the 1-900 support line 
for hints to figure out how to proceed. The King's Quest series was especially infamous for this. Which game company, founded by Ken and Roberta Williams and named after a mountain range near their home, published games like King's Quest, Leisure Suit Larry, and Gabriel Knight? All right, we'll think about the answers to these questions and we'll be right back after these messages. We're back with our final answers. Let's see who will be today's cream of the crop after John reads us back the questions. All right. Question one in top. The top selling game franchise on Nintendo platforms is, of course, Mario, which is number two. We're looking for most copies sold across all titles on all platforms within the series. Well, I know this weird fact that Pokemon is the best selling franchise period of all time. So we're thinking it's got to be number two in video games. That's a great guess. We we went with Zelda just because it's been around for quite a while with a lot of different iterations. Yeah, the correct answer is Pokemon. Yeah, the, the top grossing IP overall, number two game on Nintendo platforms. It helps that they come out with two every time. Yeah, right? yeah. yeah as soon as they yeah. said that, I was thinking the same thing. Yep. All right. Round two, uh, question two in the category of jungle. In Street Fighter, Blanca is from the jungle of Brazil. This means his favorite cocktail might be the national drink of Brazil, made with sugar, lime juice, and cachaça, a Brazilian liquor distilled from sugarcane, also known as Brazilian rum. What is Brazil's national cocktail? I don't know any Brazil-specific drinks, but uh, the description kind of sounds like a mojito, so we said mojito. Uh, we went with something uh, I tried one time. I'm not sure if it's correct, but the description sounds similar. Um, and I'm not 100% sure on the pronunciation, but I something like uh, Capahania, something like that. Yeah. The answer is a Capirinha, which give it, uh, give it I'd give them. them points. Yeah, let's give them the points. Yeah, you're, yeah you were right there. Nice, Ken. Well done. All right. In the category of mid... China is also known as the Middle Kingdom. Which Chinese company is the largest video game company in the world, owning 100% of Riot Games, 84% of Supercell, and 40% of Epic Games, among many other investments? Outside of gaming, they're best known for QQ and WeChat. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure that this is like the the conglomerate to rule all conglomerates in China. Uh, I first knew them for um, Weibo, and uh, we said Tencent. Yeah, I don't think we had anything for this, did we, Kelsey? Um, all, Not probably. really, no. <laughs> uh, so we just we just guessed Eidos, it's a general video game company. We thought, but known in China is the Penguin Company. It's Tencent That's for their logo. Yeah, well done. All right, in the category of bot, question four: One of the most beloved robots in gaming is Mega Man, but that's not actually his original name. It was changed for the U.S. market. What was his original name that fit a theme with other characters like Beat, Tango, Trouble, and Roll? Uh, at first, we thought there might be trouble in River City, so we are going to say Music Man, uh, going with the theme. But eventually, we changed to Rocket Man. Yeah, we, were, uh, we did stick with the music theme. We thought, hey, maybe if there's a treble, there's a bass. So, uh, bass or bass man. DJ Bassman. So, uh, there is a character in Mega Man called Bass. In Japan, he's known as Forte. Uh, Mega Man's real name is Rockman. Rockman. Well, we said that. Very yeah. close. Yep. It was between the two of them for us. Rock yep. and roll. If there's a roll, there's a yeah, rock. If there's a trouble, there's a yep. bass. So. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, we didn't get the points, but good job, Kelsey, either way. <laughs> Thank you. And the last question in the category of support. Early adventure games sometimes had completely insane puzzles designed to force you to call the 1-900 number for hints to figure out how to proceed. The King's Quest series was especially infamous for this. Which game company, founded by Ken and Roberta Williams and named after a mountain range near their home, published games like King's Quest, Leisure Suit Larry, and Gabriel Knight? We thought this had to be Sierra. Yeah, this is the only one I was felt uh, pretty confident on. Uh, this is certainly more around the time of my uh, video gaming experience, although my parents would have killed me if I called the 1-800 number for support. Uh, but we also said Sierra Games. And that's correct. The answer is Sierra Games or Sierra Online. Well done. How can you call them when you're also online at the same time? 
Well, yeah, you well, pick up the phone and the, the modem sounds. <laughs> <laughs> well done to both teams. An absinthe of cheese doodles uh, is going to be losing only 20 points, uh, but brings their total to 88. So even though they, they are not the victor today, they can uh, travel through time if they're in a DeLorean. And the Gouda, the Bad, and the Ugbri uh, picking up 30 points. So it was uh, a little back and forth in this final round, and they're going to end with 212, making them today's cream of the crop. The cream of the crop. Nobody does it better. Great game, you guys. That was a lot of fun. Well and, played. Uh, well written, too. It was fun. A little painful, but also very fun. <laughs> I think we just got lucky with knowing quite a bit of these. Um, Video game hints. Yeah, yeah. Definitely that. I so, think uh, Kelsey's... Yeah, we're like about the same age, right? So it's yeah, like, right. this is all the stuff we've just played. Kelsey's it's, review, I think, is, is kind of... every triviality game. It's a little painful, but a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> Mostly for the listeners. Yeah, that's right. Well, let's start with you, Kelsey. Um, as we said, we're so appreciative and thankful that you became our 500th patron. Uh, thank you for supporting the show. Any shout outs, anyone you'd like to say hello to or any uh, parting words before we let you go? Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you so much for having me. This was a blast. Um, I'll do a shout out to uh, my friend, Nick, who is also an avid listener, uh, my boyfriend, Evan. And uh, my parents and brother and sister-in-law, my brother and sister-in-law are also uh, avid listeners as well. So nice. I'm sure oh, they'll be listening thank to you. this. Thank yeah. you all. Thank you for the family affair. That's wonderful. Uh, Ken, uh, always fun to have you on the show. Uh, this time you were at home, which was nice. You didn't have to worry about being in a hotel. But uh, thank you for being here and for all of your support as well. Anyone you'd like to shout out? Or any final words? Yeah, just uh, thanks for having me back. Uh, the Questions uh, kind of missed uh, our wheelhouse a little bit, but they're certainly well written, John. Thank you very much. Uh, shout out to my wife and daughter upstairs to keep it down and give me a little bit of time to hang out since I travel so much. Uh, you know, uh, I usually like to hang out with them as much as possible, but we were able to uh, uh, figure out something to do um, while I recorded with you guys. So that was great. Um, and yeah, yeah. Thanks again. I look forward to coming back again sometime. Wonderful. Thank you so much. And John, uh, as everyone else has said, wonderfully written game. Thank you for joining us. It's nice to see you again, even though it's not in person like it was the last time. But uh, any any final words uh, for you? The the stage is yours. Yeah, thanks. Uh, this was a lot of fun to write. I hope you guys had fun, even if it didn't quite hit your uh, wheelhouse. And uh, just a general shout out. There's a lot of great causes out there. There's a lot of great things to support. I think sometimes people can feel pressure that there's too many things to support. I would just say, hey, you know, um, all we can do is try to leave the world a better place through our own efforts. So don't feel too burdened by too many things. Just make sure you're doing at least one thing. Very good point. And thanks again and for well hosting said. today's episode. Um, so Kelsey said it was painful but fun. But you know what's not painful is taking our short listener questionnaire at surveymonkey.com slash r slash airwave or click the link in the episode notes. Speaking of airwave, thanks to them as always and their great podcasts such as The Purpose Show, The Projection Booth, and Pulse of the Planet. Yeah, and thank you so much once again to all of our contestants and our hosts. Uh, thank you to John, Ken, and Kelsey for Matt, who isn't here uh, on his world tour to fix water. And for <laughs> Jeff and Ken, my name is Neil, and that was Triviality. Triviality.